You guys can live with that. We can do something for you. If you were to do this whole car, you're looking at probably about 80 grand by the time you get finished. You take and do everything on it, probably. Avery, what part of put that boot in your friggin' I'm just, mouth? I'm just saying. You're, that's I'm my just, line. Just saying. Shut up. Rust Valley Restores, a captivating reality TV show led by the charismatic Mike Hall, affectionately known as Rasta Blasta, has taken viewers on a thrilling journey of transforming neglected relics into shiny vintage treasures. Mike Hall's expertise and passion for classic cars restoration has fueled the show's success and turned his hobby into a source of joy for car enthusiasts worldwide. However, fans were taken aback when news broke that Mike Hall decided to part ways with most of his iconic car collection, keeping only 50 cars from his famed Field of Dreams. This unexpected move has left viewers speculating about the implications for the future of Rust Valley Restores. So, join us as we delve into why Mike Hall sold his car collection. We're undergoing a lot of massive changes here in Rust Valley and it's happening way too quick. I'm not liking it. How many cars does Mike have here? 27 outside and there's a few inside. So. How many is a few inside? Mm, half a dozen, I think. <laughs> Rust Valley Resorts premiered on December 6, 2018, with the first season having eight episodes. It captivated many Canadian viewers and became one of the top five reality TV programs. As the series' popularity expanded, the producers, Mayhem Entertainment, and Big Time Decent Productions, in association with Core Studios, made it available globally by allowing anyone to watch it at any time zone via the world's largest streaming network, Netflix. However, Rust Valley Restores is fueled by the contagious passion of one man, Mike Hall. A lover of fixing up discarded and broken vehicles, Mike, along with his son Connor and friend Avery Shove, embark on cross-country adventures, rescuing rides deemed as junk and granting them a new lease on life as classic vintages. These adventures are exciting. Picking cars worth saving is an art form. However, the real magic and bulk of the work unfolds at Rust Bros Restorations. These once forgotten rust buckets undergo a metamorphosis in this haven, evolving from mere scrap metal into roaring, road-worthy machines. The process becomes entertainment with Mike at the helm, a testament to his decades-long expertise in restoring cars since the 1990s, earning him a globally recognized reputation. Mike's strategy is simple, yet captivating. Turn rundown cars into awe-inspiring builds and then find buyers who share his passion. However, the twist lies in the unpredictable world of classic car appreciation, where not everyone sees the allure. The financial roller coaster adds daily uncertainty, keeping Mike's business teetering on the edge, making each episode of Rust Valley Restores a thrilling spectacle of potential failure or triumph. Despite the nail-biting financial aspect, the show has become a darling of the awards circuit, bagging five Leo Awards and securing nominations for five more. In 2020, Rust Valley Restores dominated categories like Best Screenwriting, Best Picture Editing, Best Cinematography, and Best Information, Lifestyle, or Reality Program. It also gained a nomination from the Canadian Screen Award for Best Direction in a Documentary or Factual Series in 2018. Fast forward to 2022, and the show continues its winning streak, clinching another Leo Award in the coveted Best Information, Lifestyle, or Reality Program or Series category, with four more nominations adding to its glory. I hope he at least breaks even. Start turning it. Because otherwise, it is like a black hole. Any money he has is going to get sucked in and he will never see it again. Oh. Oh. Is that as hard as you can push it? Yeah, yeah. The secret ingredient to this success? Mike's unwavering passion for classic cars. While some might label Mike as old-fashioned for his commitment to authentic techniques and parts over modern technology, this uniqueness sets Rust Valley Restores apart. This dedication to restoring cars to look new and preserving their rich history resonates deeply with classic car enthusiasts. Whether unique or not, Mike needs money to keep Rust Valley Restores afloat, and the losses made on the restore projects make one wonder how the shop still exists. Could this be the reason why Mike sold his car collection? Before we reveal that, let's delve into how Mike makes his money in the first place. Every episode of Rust Valley Restore shows us that Mike Hall has a knack for sniffing vehicle cadavers, but when it comes to making a profit, that is a problem. Mike's business acumen has been highly debated among fans of the show, but unknown to many, Rust Bros isn't Mike's first business. And to be frank, Mike's passion for vehicles probably clouds him from seeing these losses the way everyone sees it. 
Mike was born in Boniface, Manitoba, Canada in 1956. He was raised there, but moved to Kamloops in British Columbia when his father got a new job at CP Rail. Following his dad's business, Mike gained an interest in anything mechanical, and it was here his passion for cars would arise. His first guinea pig was the family car, which he worked on in the garage, and then he learned other machinery functions. As Mike grew older, he moved out and started his own business. It was a slope stabilization business called Chimera Springs Rock Works. When asked about his business, Mike described it as hanging from cliffs and blowing stuff up. However, little research shows that it's a process of maintaining the stability of inclined soil or rock shops to withstand or undergo movement. What Mike really did while he worked at Chimera Springs Rock Works was to restore rock face sculptures and create safe environments wherever he took the work. With this business, Business, he made enough money to kick back and enjoy his true passion, cars. While he ran his business, he would use his weekends to look through old garages, junkyards, and scrapyards, looking for hidden gems worth restoring. Mike kept collecting cars he thought were worth fixing, and he did manage to restore a few. Then, he moved back to British Columbia and opened Rust Bros Restorations. Rust Bros Restorations hoards and repairs hundreds of muscle cars, and at some point, the number of cars owned by the shop was 562. As of 2023, Mike's net worth is estimated to be around $5 million, so he's definitely not broke. Mike is rich enough to fund his passion. Acquiring over 550 cars is no joke, and despite being junk, it must have cost him a fortune. The truth is, having almost 600 cars is a lot of vehicles, especially for someone over 60 years of age. Mike didn't sell his cars because he was broke or had a need for money. He sold them because he didn't think he had enough time to restore them. In the show's fourth season, Mike's son Connor posted a video of their place on Instagram, saying the five-acre property property was already sold. Surprise, let me spin this camera around for a sec. So, down there is the field of dreams, all right? We got, you know, stuff everywhere, cars, pretty much every corner you can see. This is a five acre chunk of land here, and we think it's sold. The property is the same one that housed Mike's Field of Dreams. Connor didn't say how much the property was sold for, but in 2017, it was listed for $1.5 million. So, as of 2022, when Connor announced news of its sale, plus the popularity the show has added to the property, it may have sold for more. After the sale of the property, Mike announced that all the cars in his field of dreams were also for sale. The reason was that the new owner of the land gave them six months to get rid of the cars so they could take over. The deal was that if the cars weren't sold in the six month period, they would be crushed. Mike has been holding on to his field of dreams and doesn't want to let go, but now he doesn't have a choice. This reason combined with the fact that he's not getting any younger and has received his first senior citizen check, his field of dreams needs to go now so he can make financial arrangements for his loved ones. The final episode in the fourth season of Rust Valley Restores featured the auction of all of Mike's cars. Many people attended to see these historic automobiles in person or bid on those auctioned off. In addition to those who attended the auction in person, 700 internet bidders participated. Mike didn't want to be there at first and was having a panic attack, but Connor and Avery persuaded him to come to say goodbye to them properly. Saying goodbye to these cars is definitely a painful experience for Mike. No one wants to see what they love disappear. He said, the whole day was a blur. Some stuff went for way more than I thought it would, and some for way less. This shows that Mike's decision was not driven by a lack of love for these automotive treasures, but rather a desire for a less cluttered property, providing his family with much needed breathing space. Mike also hopes that this downsizing move will grant him the precious commodities of time and money, allowing him to ease off on the relentless pace of his restoration work. Connor also shares his sentiments. His dreams seem to diverge from the sea of vintage vehicles his father owns, and the family saw the sale as a pathway to align their priorities. Despite the inevitable pain of parting with his beloved cars, Mike found solace in knowing that these automotive gems were finding new homes. During the auction, Mike witnessed young people and families eager to embrace these relics and breathe new life into them. It was a poignant realization for Mike, reinforcing his belief that these cars would be cared for and rebuilt, ensuring their legacy will live on. In the end, 
Though Mike intended to trim down his collection significantly, sentimentality prevailed. The auction concluded with Mike deciding to keep 60 cars for himself, unable to part with all of them. This not-so-surprising twist showcases Mike's deep connection and passion for these vintage vehicles, demonstrating that, sometimes, even a seasoned restorer like him can resist holding on to a few cherished classics. He made around $750,000 from the auction, but as soon as he auctioned the bulk of his collection, he was already buying new ones. Before the fourth season ended, he took delivery of another abandoned classic car. Mike's friend, Avery Shove, hinted that Mike might start collecting cars again on a new property. That prediction might be pretty close. Some habits are quite hard to shake.